Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And the biggest news this week around was the announcement of the Hobby Next Phase 2022 Winter Online event. It'll be held on the 19th and the 20th and Bandai is promising to release a whole lot, well to announce a whole lot of stuff on those two days. On the 19th, we're getting 30 minutes missions, 30 minutes sisters, Demon Slayer, Kyokai Senki, Digimon Adventure, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, Pokemon, Entry Grades, High Grade, and even a new line of model kits. And then the 20th is dedicated entirely to Gumpla. And I wonder how the Gumpla announcements are going to be this time around, because this year, in terms of announcements, we've really seen both ends of the spectrum. Um, we've had amazing events like the Tamashi Nations event we just had, and then events that could have done with a few more exciting announcements. I'm just hoping for a non-P Bandai High Grade Universal Century, and maybe even a non-P Bandai Gundam Seed High Grade. I could definitely go for a new Saigu or, you know, maybe a new Jim variant. Again, one that isn't P Bandai. And hey, if they're feeling really crazy, maybe they'll even announce a completely new Master Grade. And I'm also fairly certain that we're going to be getting a new real grade announcement. And it would be really cool if it was the Ariel. So let me know down below what you think we'll be getting and what you hope that we'll be getting because unfortunately those are often two very different things. Um, as for that new line of model kits, I mean I'm not saying anything but you know Armored Core 6 just got announced so um, yeah. And that brings us to our second headline, Armored Core 6 just got announced and FromSoft has made it abundantly clear that it is not going to be Mecha Dark Souls. Um, and then if you still need to do some holiday shopping, Hobbling Japan is currently offering up to 25% off on international shipping. So I'll have links to some cool Gundam stuff down below that you can snag for the holidays, and by buying through those links, you are also directly supporting the channel. And talking about cool announcements, the Steam version of Gundam Battle Operation 2 is still alive. They just announced that a new network test will be taking place sometime early in 2023, and that the game itself is slated for a 2023 release, so probably a late 2023 release, depending on how the servers are going to hold up. Um, so yeah, let's hope that this time around, they aren't made out of Leos. And continuing with the cool announcements, over the weekend, the results for the 10th Gumpla Builders World Championship will be live streamed over at the Bandai Spirits YouTube channel, and it will be available in English, Japanese, and Chinese, all of which are linked down below. And I'll also have the official website down there um, where you can get a 360 degree view of all of the entries that will be duking it out in the finals. May the best and most original one win. On the figure front then, the only bit of really new news is the announcement of the China Limited QMSV RX-78 II Gunda version A-Ape. And I'm not sure if the Gunda in the project and the product name is a typo or if it's meant to be like that because I feel like it should be Gundam as it would be usually but they wrote it Gunda in both the title and the description so not really sure there. But anyways, uh, this figure is in collaboration with a ape by a bathing ape, costs 699 yuan, 101 US, and went up for sale yesterday, again only in mainland China. Uh, the rest then were all just updates for figures that we already knew about. Last week Friday, pre-orders went live for the Robot Spirits RX-72 Gundam Rollout Color Version and Plastic Kyoshiro Special Part Set and Gerbera Tetra Custom version anime, and both of them are slated for a June release. 
The Gundam goes for 8,800 yen, 65 US, and make sure that you're not making any mistakes with what we're actually getting with this set. Um, we got the rollout Gundam color version, a shield, beam rifle, hyper bazooka, three beam sabers with effect parts, a few extra bits and pieces, chest armor and leg armor to make a semi-armored Gundam, and armor pieces for use with the perfect Gundam. So when it comes to this picture of the perfect Gundam, this is actually an image of the separately sold perfect Gundam but with the feet and leg armor parts that come with this figure. So this is still definitely a really cool set, but don't go buying it thinking that you can also make a full perfect Gundam with this. Um, as for the Gerbera then, that thing goes for 9,020 yen, 67 US, and it really is a sight to behold with all of those effect parts and all of the other stuff that it also comes with because in addition to the effect parts we're getting two beam sabers, a long range rifle, a beam machine gun and a beam rifle. This thing definitely looks like it has a lot of play value and posing capabilities. And then from Witch of Mercury we got the final details for the Soleta and Mirene aqua shooters and Gachapon portrait set. The Aqua Shooters will go up for reservation on the 16th with a May release date. And while these figures aren't limited to P Bandai, the extra faces unfortunately are. But that might not even be their biggest problem, because even considering the fact that this is a twin pack, 8,250 yen, around 60 US, I forgot to write down the exact conversion rate, probably because I was too shocked, is exceedingly expensive for figures that are only 7.5 centimeters tall, and that is less than 3 inches. The gotcha portraits then will go up for reservation on the 19th, are scheduled for a June release and will set you back 7,700 yen, around 50, 60 US. The aqua shooters I'm not entirely sold on, but I think I'm definitely gonna go for the gacha portraits. And sticking with Witch from Mercury, uh, Gachapon also announced Witch from Mercury acrylic stand Gachapons. Wave 1 will be popping up in February and consists of Soleta, Miurine, Nika, Choo Choo, and Cecilia and Roji. And it seems like a second wave is already basically confirmed because they also showed off a lone Delling Rembron. To be specific, a super deformed, cute Delling Rembron, uh, but without any further information on it. And the final Witch from Mercury product announcement then is a collaboration with uh, Prime Maniacs to create character specific perfume. More details like release date, pricing and which characters we'll be getting will be announced at a later date, but I think we can all safely assume that we will at least be getting Suleta and Miurine. Although me personally, I would kill for a bottle of concentrated choo-choo badassery. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, this week's episode then, well, I saw this image and I thought it was going to be a really cute and fun episode. Yeah, that did not end up happening. Um, I am really liking this new Bob character though. Kinda reminds me of Bob the Builder. Also, uh, Witch from Mercury got nominated for the top 100 internet buzzwords, which are being based on the Nico Nico Encyclopedia and the Pixif Encyclopedia, and Witch from Mercury, Suleta Mercury, and Gulja Turk made it onto the list. Now, unfortunately, they didn't manage to secure any of the big prizes, but they did still perform pretty damn well. Gyul landed on the 33rd spot, Witch from Mercury on the 15th spot, and Suleta on the 9th spot. So again, very commendable. And of course, as soon as Suleta came up on the live stream, the chat was filled with Tanuki and Tomato comments. Um, also, another thing that I was kind of surprised by was to see the backrooms appear on the list. So, it seems like they're popular in Japan too. 
As for the big winners then, the most popular one was Uta from the One Piece film, the Pixiv prize went to Spy Family, and the Nico Nico prize went to Zundamon, which is a character I'd never heard about, so you learn something new every day. And I will have the link to the live stream down below if you want to watch the whole thing. It is of course completely in Japanese, so be warned about that. In the gaming news then, Gundam Breaker Mobile got the high new HWS, Double X, Epion, Commander-in-Chief Char Aznable, Troa Barton, Crew Multi-Mission, the RPD's Experimental Mobile Suit Event that gets you the Thunderbolt Zaku, well the Thunderbolt Psycho Zaku, and then there were some end of year extras like 6x uh, XP from the growth hangers and free capsule tickets. Gundam Battle Operation 2 then, in addition to that long-awaited Steam announcement, also got a new development newsletter talking about the new updates for the console version. I will have the full thing linked down below, but the most important things are that the narrative Gundam B-Pax has joined the fight and there are new missions in the battle simulator. The Scrawny Hunter Trial, the Remnant Core to Arms Survival, and the A Curse Falling to Earth Boss. In Extreme vs 2 Cross Boost, the new Gundam HWS is also joining, and Amro is joining as well, alongside some balancing. In Iron Blooded Orphans G, the prototype Vidar was available as a pickup gotcha, alongside its pilot Gaelio, and the machine also received a profile on the official website this week. Uh, the machine is called the XK, it's piloted by Galio, aka Vidar. Um, it uses a Proto Burst Saber and 110mm Vidar rifle. And as my introduction of the machine alluded to, it is a test machine to gather data for the finalized Gundam Vidar. And then finally, if you like some physical cards with your arcade games, it has been announced that the Gundam Arsenal base will be getting the Winter Festival 2022-2023 card pack Get Campaign from December the 23rd until January the 9th. And even though you might not be able to play the game, you might want to keep your eyes open for the cards because again, these designs are really nice. Each package only has one card, with the available ones being Karen and the Gang, Four and Camille, Omro and Chan, Hero and the Gang, and Lock on Stratus. In other news then, Gachapons have apparently been around for 45 years, and to celebrate the occasion there will be a little expo in Shinagawa Station, held from the 15th to the 18th, which will include an SD Gundam World Gachapon. Uh, the Mobile Suit MSD website has been updated with more mech profiles from Kukuruzawans Island. This weekend, the Yoshikazu Yasuhiko slash Gundam The Origin exhibition will hit Kanazawa, and we got to see pictures from the Haro Carbon Neutral Festival in Toyota. Uh, there was a wrapped RX-782 car, a wrapped Char Custom car, they had those tiny pod cars wrapped up in regular Zaku theme, and they also had the little cars with Gundam images projected onto them. Slightly less impressive, but still pretty cute to see. As for the things you could get this week then, it wasn't a lot, but the day you could get the awesome looking Gundam Farocht in all of its glory for 2,090N16 US. And in terms of reading material, there was the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized, the January issue of New Type which had a deep dive into Elan Ceres and Shadik, and a Witch from Mercury pinup, the January issue of Animage featuring a bunch of Witch from Mercury content as well as an absolutely amazing cover, the January issue of Animedia which has happiness advice from Gyul, Elan and Shadik, which has to be a very interesting column to say the least, the ebook for Gundam Forward New Mobile Report Gundam Wing Endless Walls Volume 2 has appeared on Amazon in the US, UK, Canada, Germany, France, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands, and not only features a lot of Gundam Wing gunpla, but even something on the figure-rise standard Lagos. Then there was the Hobby Japan Mechanics 14 with a special on Macross and how to build yourself an old school Desert Dom, 
Um, the Gundam Seed 20th Anniversary Commemorative Official Book has begun accepting pre-orders, and a long out-of-print Shars Counter-Tag Dojin is getting a reprint. It'll first pop up on the Winter Comic Cam, after which it'll be sold through bookstores including Amazon. And probably the big reason why this doujin is so important is because of the person who edited the book. None other than Hideaki Anno, who is of course famous for Evangelion. Also, even though this is a reprint, it has been confirmed that this version of the doujin will be slightly different, with the design and text having been slightly modified, and some illustrations are apparently missing. And then this week, we once again have a Gundam Cafe segment. With Christmas around the corner, you can now get two types of Christmas art on either your regular latte or your ice latte. The promotion started on the 12th and will last until the 25th. And with that, it is already time to have a look at this week's Gundam Apparel. And this week, we also had an announcement from Cospa. Releasing in April are the Mafti and Principality of Zeon fly jackets. They go for 31,900 yen each, 235 US, and they'll also be available in regular stores like Hobbling Japan, so I'll have them linked down below. Strict G then unveiled two new collections on last week, Friday, uh, with the first one being the Strict G Fab 22 AW collection featuring some very college-inspired items, each in either Earth Federation or Red Comet theme. There's a jersey for 39,600 yen, 293 US, a sweater for 9,130 yen, 68 US, and a shirt for 5,280 yen, 39 US. And the second collection is their third lineup of Gundam-inspired ukiyo-e apparel, or as they are calling the collection the Sora Yoe collection, um, which is like a pun on Ukiyoe. Because Ukiyoe means pictures of the floating world, and they now replace the floating bit with the Universal from Universal Century. So now it's like pictures of the Gundam world or pictures of the Universal Century, depending on how freely you want to translate it. And these pictures include three designs from Zeta Gundam, being episode 13, episode 49, and episode 50. For 5,830 N 43 US, you can get them on a t shirt. For 8,030 N 60 US, you can get them on a long sleeve t shirt. And for 14,300 N 106 US, you can get them on a hoodie. Meanwhile, over at Bankore, they started selling the Kukuruza Wands Island apparel and miscellaneous items on last week, Friday. Uh, there is a stainless mug for 2,500 yen, 19 US, a belt pouch for also 2,500 yen, 19 US, a rubber keychain of either Dewan's Zaku's head or Dewan's Zaku's shield for 1,000 yen a pop, 8 US, a rubber coaster for another 1,000 yen, 8 US, a pin set of the Southern Cross course emblem and Dewan's Zaku's head for 1,400 yen, 10 US, a toad bag for 2,000 yen, 15 US, a face towel for another 2,000 yen, 15 US, and a mini towel for 900 yen, 7 US. And I gotta say, upon seeing that Dewan Zaku shield towel, I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more of that because it fits just so perfectly. And on the same day, reservations started for some Federation and Xeon jackets. They both go for 13,200 yen each, 98 US, and are slated for a January release. On Sunday then, you can make a reservation to show off your favorite G-Witch character. Because for 3,850 yen a pop, 29 US, you could get a white Soleta, blue Mirine, black Yule, beige Elan, and sand brown Shadik t-shirt. Next up then are the Federation or Xeon business bags that go for 7,480 yen each, 55 US, and Earth Federation or Xeon parkas that go for 16,280 yen, 120 US. And then finally today we got three more collections. 
Continuing with the Earth Federation and Xeon themes, we got a blue and a black body warmer for 660 yen each, 49 US. From Char's counterattack, there's a blue Omro or black Char fleece jacket for 9,350 yen, 69 US. And last but not least, there was an Oath MS team sweater for 6,380 yen, 47 US. And all of these items will be coming your way in February. And as usual, let's wrap up this Gundam news with some polls. A few weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know which unit players were looking forward to playing the most in Gundam Evolution. And the winning results were very decisive. The new Gundam managed to garner 46.6%, getting almost half of the votes, which really isn't surprising. Because not only is the new Gundam a very popular Gundam to begin with, but it's also the new unit. Pun not intended. Um, and at the time that the poll was live, it hadn't been released yet, so it was only logical that people were looking forward to using this thing the most. Uh, for second place then, we had one of the closest calls in a long time. The Barbs managed to get 21.5%, which is only 0.5% more than the Sazavi. And in last place, with only 10.8%, is the Mahiru. Although, all things considered, that's really not a bad result for such an obscure machine. Especially not when you take into consideration that it was up against three extremely popular units. So, good for the Mahiru. Um, as for the currently ongoing one then, Gundam.info wants to know which character from Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket would look best in a Santa suit. And currently in last place with 44 votes we have Steiner Hardy, followed by a close fight for second place between Charlie with uh, 73 votes and Bernie with 77 votes. With, um, I mean, Charlie definitely having the physique for a perfect Santa cosplay. He just has to put on a beard. But the one who is currently in the lead, and the one who's probably also going to win, is Chris. And I think we all know what kind of Santa suit the voters had in mind. So if you also want to cast your vote, I'll have that link down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thanks to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.